Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. In today's show, we travel to Northern Ontario to Fireside Lodge. Fireside Lodge specializes in accommodating anglers who enjoy warm water fly fishing action. Today I'll be angling for big northern pike, muskie, and fat smallmouth bass. We're going to talk about locating open water structure, predator-prey relationships, and a lot of other fascinating topics. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. Oh, how thick that is. I mean, it's just a huge, thick fish. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby, look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association. Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. Today, I'm in Northern Ontario near Sioux Lookout. I've been invited to Fireside Lodge by Alan and Audrey Brandes to come and try the incredible warm water fishing they have to offer. Fireside Lodge is unique because it's one of the few facilities you can easily drive to in Northern Ontario, and yet the fishing is still fantastic. Alan has specialized in accommodating fly fishers. From his boats to the information he provides, he understands the needs of all anglers. This is not an easy thing to find at most destinations. On our first day out, we decide to focus our search for big northern pike and muskie. Fireside has garnered a great reputation for producing some really big fish, so I'm naturally really pumped about fishing these waters. I'm going to be fly fishing and Alan is using a spinning rod. Both will work well for pike and muskie. Alan takes me to a medium sized bay and we begin fishing the deep weed line. Many anglers make the mistake of only focusing on the shoreline or weed beds. Often the largest fish are a little bit deeper. Okay, what it is, it's just a typical large bay that dips way back. It's very shallow in the back, but we stopped in about 25 feet of water to try to catch that first rise that comes up from about uh, 20 to about 15 feet of water because the weeds really start to grow there in hopes of maybe hooking a big fish and catching a big fish. It's a structure that's a center lake bay structure, so typical of Canadian lakes, uh, especially with clear water because we grow deep weeds. and. If you notice, we're not concentrating on the shore again because it's right across the middle of the bay here and we'll eventually move from one side to the other. But it'll hold, it's a real good musky and pike spot. And uh, musky and pike really like to use these outer edges because they could take advantage of Cisco and whitefish that are in a little deeper water columns. Plus they come up and feed on your normal shallow water bait fish. All right. Now what's interesting is that I had two fish. I saw the one. And there's a bigger one, and the little guy got to it first. The little guy got to it. Yeah. Gee. As often happens with bass and pike and trout and everything. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, would you say that? size pike, you know, the four to six pound pike, is that like an average size here? Actually, we have a lot this size, but be surprised how many we catch bigger than that. Um, just the zone we're in seems like that's what it's holding mostly right now. But that is a good size pike. You notice, I don't know if you notice, they're a little heavier. Yeah. Our fish have a little bit more wider body to them, even when they're not real big. Uh, lengthwise, they get, start getting beefy. We've got a lot of white fish in Cisco in our lakes, and that tends to fatten the pike up lots. We have white sucker also, but the white fish in Cisco have that fatty base to them, and when they feed on that, that's really what makes them a little bit beefier all the way around on their bodies. So. <laughs> you got one. Yeah, you... just a little guy though, I think. 
It's not the, we just had a very big, big pike, like 42 inches, come up on Alan's lure. X rep. And, and this guy cast out and this guy came up and hit. He's not huge, but he's not a bad fish. He's not a bad fish. He's a good size fish. Okay, now he's playing. Look at this, playing possum. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to, wants to jump at me and splash me again. These are so much fun to catch. There's there's the possum. We keep having this where we're, we've got, I'm seeing big fish, and the little ones keep taking it. Now, let's put this into perspective. These I'm calling these little fish, but in most places, look at these doing this nine weight rod. Um, these, these are good fish. And in this colder water, they're very, very strong. And I'll tell you, on a fly rod, this is so much fun. It's a decent fish. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Yeah, I'll come hold the net for you. If you hold it right between a bone, the jawbone and the tendon, they'll kind of sit still for you. Looks fine. Excellent. <laughs> Jeez. Not like muskies. They won't do the circle thing. You just went off gently into the darkness. That was a nice 35 to 40 inch pike. They have definitely gone passive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. following. He was right, you know, his nose was bumping it, but he wouldn't take. So maybe I gotta slow it down or big pike? Yeah. Though we caught some nice fish in the morning, we still had not found the really big pike and muskie that dwell in the lake system. It was time to reconsider our tactics and how we were presenting our lures. One of the reasons I love coming to Northern Ontario is the tranquility and beauty. The region abounds with wildlife, beautiful rivers and lakes, moments of natural splendor, majestic and serene beauty that is really second to none. It's one of the last great wilderness locations and I really love it up here. Alan and I had been working hard to find a large northern pike or muskie, but were finding it difficult. The changing sky conditions, which varied from overcast to bright and sunny, were really putting the big fish off the bite. On another part of the lake, a young man from North Carolina, who was here with his family, was having a lot more success. The fishing here has been extremely generous to us. My dad, he actually caught a 43 and a half inch tiger muskie, and he was hooked from that point on, of course, all of us, we've landed uh, master angler, 18 inches or more, uh, smallmouth bass. And uh, then this year, uh, we all targeted really big toothy critters. Uh, I particularly have wanted a muskie for the last eight years that we've been coming here. Uh, and I finally got one this year. And it was, it was a master angler, 46 yeah, incher. The best part was I was actually able to let it go and somebody else can catch it now. It's, it's back in the water. And that really is probably one of the best parts about catching a big fish like that. It's, it was a great fight. It flipped around like a muskie uh, usually does. But the best part was I was able to put it back in the water and I can come back to it next year uh, when we come back again. After some reflection, Alan and I decided to slow down our presentations and really introduce a pause into our retrieve. That pause often is all it takes to help trigger a following predator. Both can impart an action that simulates wounded bait fish. The pause works because it signals to a following predator that the bait fish is wounded or even crippled and cannot get away. To the predator, like a big northern pike, this means one thing, easy meal. Okay, the presentation we're using today, I'm using a, a bait that I can twitch and pause it seems like that's the presentation that's been working the best. What I'm doing, it's a suspending bait, so I let it drop a little bit and then I twitch it a few times like this and I pause. 
I try to pause for the count of five to seven, 1,000, and then give it just another twitch or two like that. And it just sits there in front of the fish. The fish just really get tantalized by it if they're in somewhat of a, a negative or a neutral feeding mood, and they'll tend to strike it a little bit more when they're not in a very aggressive mood. And they'll even strike it when they're aggressive, so it's a good presentation for all time. Got one. There's a the boat, eh? He's a big one. All right. What type of structure are we fishing here, uh, Alan? It's a saddle between an island and a, another island's point, and it's got a small weed bed on it. It's a perfect so, classic location for bigger muskie and bigger pike. This is a good fighter. Whenever they try to go onto the boat on you, you stick your rod into the water as far as you can keep them from hitting the bottom of the boat or the motor. And that's the resistance. All you gotta do is hold on and the resistance usually brings them back. He's in. Nice fish. Nice fish. Let you do your work there to get that lure out. And I just had a hit on my fly. Again, very slow near the bottom. Very slow retrieve. So the fish are not particularly active today. They're, they're, they're biting, but I had one, what they're doing a lot with my flies are nipping the tail. It looks like that's what he did with yours because he took the back hook. Exactly what he did. He came up and he really just came up from underneath it and he just barely just grabbed the end of it lightly. I just barely got the hook set in him. I just want a photo op with you. Wow, what a nice fish. I got a good photo for you there, Alan. Let's get a few others. There you go. Well, that was a nice fish, Alan. It's uh, amazing. We're th I'm throwing uh, a fly, which is very similar to what Alan's using. It's blue and white. See it right here. And I just had a very large pike followed in that was 40 inches plus, you know, 40 to 42 inches. Big, big pike. And, uh, but I'm having trouble getting them to commit. Stick baits, which imitate bait fish, are not that different than fly patterns. They share similar colors and silhouette. What is key for both is presentation. Presentation is always important no matter what species you fish for or what tackle you use. Ensuring the lure or fly is in the right depth of water and imparts an action that triggers strikes. It was just sitting there. It's a good fish. Might need that big net if someone could open that up for me. Okay. Now, was it on the pause or just as soon it as it hit the water? It was when it was dead stopped. I just stopped it. That's a nice thick fish. It is a nice fish. It shows you the, that's the typical little vermilion fish right there. It's the wide body, good size. There you go. All right. Thank you. It's a nice fish. I want to get a quick photo of you, Alan. After successfully catching some nice sized northern pike, Alan and I decided to search for smallmouth bass. I have loved catching smallmouth bass since I was a young boy, and the chance to catch them on a fly rod was quite exciting for me. We had found both pike and smallmouth located near a deep weed line drop off. This is typical summer structure, but we we're both having problems getting hookups. The fish were following and sometimes biting, but not enough given the aggressive action. Something was wrong. They're not real active. Like they're following, but they're not like on its tail, you know, when they want to eat something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look at him, look at him. Look at this, John. Yeah. Jeremy. No. Got him. No, no. Oh, God. Oh. He wanted oh, it. He's another one. We knew the smallmouth were keyed in on something, which is why they were in deep water on a weed bed edge. But the question was, what? We needed to use our powers of observation to figure this problem out, and it didn't take long for the answer to become apparent. What is the deal? What is the deal? There's a whole school of them there. Look at him. Oh, lost him. Right here. Got him. Got him. He's got two beside him, three, four. And what's happening here is there's 
packs of smallmouth bass that are roaming and chasing the, the bait fish. This is very much like stripers on bait fish off of Cape Cod. You ready? There you go. All right. Beauty. It's a great looking fish. Bronze. Just like that name, bronze back. Single barbless hook. As I pondered what had just happened, it suddenly dawned on me the smallmouth were chasing my big streamer fly, but not attacking, because it did not match what they were eating. No, it was something else they were intent on, small minnows. The bass were obviously chasing the minnows, small perch, and other bait fish out of the shallow weed bed into the open. Then, like ravenous wolf packs chasing down a stray caribou, these smallmouth bass aggressively attacked lone minnows and small perch. There was no mercy shown. So the problem was, my fly was too big and too deep. I needed to change tactics, and as soon as I did, the results were incredible. Once we had figured out the pattern and technique, what followed was utter chaos and sheer fishing bliss. Got him. Oh, pig. One's coming up. Got him. Got him. Ready to go. And I saw that school and cast to them. They're just driving around here looking for the minnows and jumping on them. <laughs> this is Fabulous. so much fun on a fly rod. Oh, look at that. It's not as big as the other ones. Oh, but still, what great sport. Small monsters. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they're such great fighters. There's one. He's on it. Got him. Ready ah. to go. Now, this is incredible. You know what happened? Oh, I lost him. Look, but there's still some more. And. I got him. Oh, I missed him. They're still, they're still here. What happened? Got him. What happened is the school literally came up from like, what are we in, 10 feet? Well, we're in 9.8, so you're yeah. right on. Yeah, 10 feet of water. And I was throwing the fly out here quickly and, 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 uh, oh. and making it uh, <laughs> Making a twitch along the surface, I did it about five times, and it's, it's almost like it was a dinner bell to them. They thought, okay, there's a bunch of minnows up there. Let's go up and investigate. And I missed two fish in a row, and then got this third one. Look at this guy. Is that Look any fun? Look how well he's fighting. Oh, is, this that, is... is that any fun? <laughs> yeah. I can see why people come from all over. Oh, look at this guy. Look at the fight he's giving me. Oh. I can see why people come from all over to get these fish. Oh, look at that. Beautiful bass. Nice and chunky, too. They must be really fat by the end of the season. Oh, gosh, they just keep gouging themselves all summer long. That's their feeding period. It's a time of plenty. A lot of people don't think that in the middle of the summer you can catch a lot of smallmouth, but that's when they eat the most, like all other fish. That looks like another nice 15 incher, would you say? That's probably the same, yeah, 15 inches, classic barred and real bronze. Beautiful looking fish. Got him. Oh, got him. That is fabulous. This is incredible. And it's amazing because, uh, have you seen this, uh, Alan, recently? I mean, this type of action? Well, Where they're... I've seen it before. Look but... at this, there's four, five fish around him. And five it's in weeds. Smallmouth. You gotta make, a... what's amazing, it's in weeds. It's all in weeds, where people always think smallmouth are in rocks. But this is where all the food is. That's right. In the summertime, that's where the, the, the food is. Oh, look at this, a nice fish. Really thick, look at that. He's just a football. Oh, and this is so much fun in a six weight rod. Oh, look at this, he's making the sage just rock. Of course, the only concern you get is that if a muskie comes along, and you've told me about these guys getting grabbed. That's right. By There's the another one here. that just came up right alongside them while you were fighting them this long. That's how active they are. Now this is why you got to use three X tippet too. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's even fatter and broodier. Sixteen inches, but much bigger. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, look how thick that is. I mean, it's just a huge, thick fish. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. And there's literally dozens and dozens of them chasing up from the bottom at the bait fish, and we're just flicking the fly out. I am actually enticing them up. This is so much exciting. I mean, I, I'm just, ah, it's fun. No matter where you fish, you have to pay attention. Observe what is happening around you, ready to adapt. Once we had correctly assessed what the smallmouth bass were eating, then we had nothing but success. But it was all because we observed and adapted to the conditions. And all I'm using is a little white muddler, the twin tail. Look at all the bass underneath them. Look at that. There's so many big fish here. Oh, sweet. Nice fish. Oh, gosh. This one has no stripes. Got him. Oh, pig. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at the size of that fish. Well, I hope everybody at home, you've enjoyed today's show here at Fireside Lodge up in Northern Ontario. Um, if you haven't tried this type of smallmouth bass fishing, if you haven't tried fly fishing for Northern Pike and Muskie, I strongly recommend you do. I mean, this is just so much fun. Look at this, look at this bass. And, uh, and catching bass like this on leech patterns, poppers, I mean, it's just so much fun. And if you're using conventional tackle, I mean, you can catch them too. I mean, it's just, oh, look at that fish, look at that fish. Oh. Well, let's see if I can get him in. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you want to learn more about this show, some of the locations we go to, some of the fly patterns we use, go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Oh, that looks beautiful. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Kinawabi Travel Association, Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.